Nerds. Hey, everybody! I'm Tom Vassell. Hey, it's me, Rotto! And we are back. It's been three weeks since you've last seen us. So, uh, we just, there was a Summer Spectacular, and then on my channel, then there was the recovery from the Summer Spectacular. <laughs> and meanwhile, Rotto never stopped. Uh, no. Although I did almost break my leg a few weeks ago. Took a big tumble walking the dogs and um, really pulled my ankle. And I've been hobbling around ever since. For a while, I had to use my mom's walker to get around. So when we first started this, we were under the impression that we'd be doing it for a couple months because that's when the quarantine would be over. <laughs> so that may or may not be the case at this point. So what we're doing at this point, folks, is we'll be going to a bi-weekly thing. Still every other channel, but bi-weekly. Yeah. Because another a, a very positive reason for this is because both of us are now starting to get all the cool new releases that were supposed to come out in 2020 and are still coming out. You know, it's kind of funny. We got so used to a tsunami of games that the fact that there's slightly less, I still can't really tell. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I wonder, I assume we're still going to get that same explosion of games late year, even without Essen in its traditional form. It's too late. All the publishers had already done all their scheduling and planning around Gen Con and Essen, so we're still going to see these games coming out the same time of the year as always, right? Yeah, that's true. By the way, folks, let us know if one of us is too loud or the other, you know. Um, but yeah, that's that's definitely a, a thing. Hmm. Yeah. Well, anyhow, I mean, at, this, at the end of the day, there's all kinds of new things that are coming out. There's a lot of new games. I was looking at the, uh, Eric Martin does his, normally he does a Gen Con hotness thing. And now he's just doing a summer releases hot, you know, hot thing. And so I've been looking at that. And there's still a lot of cool, interesting games. Yeah, yeah, to yeah. To talk about. Definitely. What's in front I mean, of heck, you, by the way? Uh, this is one of three games that I made live today because they all launched on Kickstarter. This is actually a crazy month for me. I've got a ton more I have to cover. This is With a Smile and a Gun, which is a quote from Al Capone, that you get farther in life with a smile and a gun. And here's the thing about this, Tom, that really surprises me. This is a two-player only area control game that Jen and I actually enjoyed getting a little bit cutthroat. Huh. Which is unheard of for us. That's interesting. I, yes. You know, I, I think I like this little bit cutthroat thing. Um, I think so. I've heard you over the last couple of years more and more often saying it's a little too mean. I don't remember the old Tom Vassell ever saying that. That's, that's true. I'll tell you what, though. I was talking to someone. I don't mind as it's, it's a weird thing. I don't mind so much being mean in a two-player game. Uh, as I mean, as, not overly so, but in a sense of, Yes, I hurt you, but that's because it's a net sum positive for me. Exactly. And it if it's just a balances. points transfer, it's no big deal. You losing three points is the same as me gaining three points. It's just points. Yeah, but I played a game the other day against an unnamed person who <laughs> so beat me at the point where I was like, look, I don't normally resign from a game, but I feel like I should <laughs> at this point because I'm just getting such a drubbing. And they yep. were sitting there, and I said, you know, you could stop taking 15-minute turns. You've won. <laughs> um, and so there, there can be a point where it can feel a little too much. But I cannot tell you how many times I have said near in the final act of whatever game it is, you know, honey, you have won this game by 20 points. You, 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 you don't have to sweat this particular turn too long. No! Come back to me in five minutes, and I'll find another 30 points I can squeeze you for. But that's 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 me and my gaming life. Well, I'm happy right now. My daughter is in the other room, and she is in oh, the middle of, of painting uh, Gloomhaven, Jaws of the Lion. Although she did complain about painting that uh, ex the what's the guy, the little explosion guy. Uh, the demolitionist. The demolitionist. The... That is one tiny figure. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. And she's still new, so that's a that's a good uh, trial by fire for her. It is, because I had her painting our, um, some come on stuff, and those figures are a lot easier to paint. She painted yep. Munchkin Quest. But she's really enjoying it, and folks, I'm paying her for it. Don't worry. Also, okay, yep. If she I doesn't get her, it right, you can send her back and make her paint them again until she gets it right. Well, she's the only child of 
seven who want to paint at this point in time. <laughs> I don't want to make a kid do it who doesn't like doing it, right? You know, yeah, but. sure. All righty. Well, let's jump to today's board game mechanism, which at first I thought uh, Rado would not be interested in. Then I saw the top game, and so here we go. It's true. It's true. Campaign. Uh, campaign and battle card driven games. I don't know why the word campaign is there. It's battle cards. Well, because it's not necessarily a bad... It, well, I guess so. You can't justify it either. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm sure if if uh, Jeff was here... Exactly. We really, we really should I have mean, him on the show this sometime. Now, right? <laughs> you have talked to him about this. I don't He's know if I even have. He's kind of a part of the Dice Tower Network. All right. Well, actually... The most well-known game of this type is actually not Gloomhaven yet, but Twilight yeah. Struggle. Of course, yes. And the interesting thing about Twilight Struggle, and actually it's very young baby brother, which just came out, um, Colonial, uh, Imperial Struggle, is a lot of times these games have, Imperial Struggle is actually not this way, but um, you have this card and you play the card and you either take an action on it or you use it for points. Or resources. Yeah. For, or for resources. Yeah. Gloomhaven takes this and they have you I don't use... think I would consider Gloomhaven a battle card driven game um, honestly I didn't expect it to be on here I expected I was just going to complain about why do the Twilight Struggles and the um, you know all these war games monopolize this amazing cool mechanism because here's what I understood it to be having played Twilight Struggle and um, was it 1960 at various times I've got a hand of cards I could either play this card to do some really cool effect on it, or I can play it to get resources of some sort. But if I play it to get resources, that means you get some cool effect on it. And that is well, that's, amazing. No, I think that actually is amazing. And spoiler alert is one of the reasons Imperial uh, Struggle is not as good as Twilight Struggle. But oh, if I'm reading the direction here, this is essentially saying... Me? Actions are in cards in your hand. That's it. So you have cards that give you actions. That's so, really super broad. I know. Well, I have to say that that because if you look at the fourth game on this list, it's Castle Panic. Wow. When I, okay. when I sort that right. by yeah, number right. people I own. Sorted. I haven't sorted it. So is I, Concordia I did by number on ratings. this list then? Is what? Is Concordia on this list? Because it should be. Well, I, no, I think it has to be, I I think it has to be war involved. <laughs> so... Oh, okay. In Castle Panic, your castle's getting attacked. Um, this this yeah, one seems to be a little this is a case broad. Of going too broad. I mean, everybody <laughs> understood what this system meant originally. I bet you anything, this is one of those situations where, um, okay, we all understand what it means. It's the Twilight Struggle thing that I just described, but then people just started marking games up. I mean, there's 2,400 games, almost 2,500 games in the database. Which is, and all this is is you play cards to trigger actions. I guess, I guess. But then why put the word campaign in? This is very weird. We need to get a special guest appearance from Jeff at some point, if for no other reason, so he can decry. What have you done to my beautiful, perfect system? Hey, let's just go to the next category. All right. All right. The next one is card drafting. All right. I was not prepared for this. I'll have to change the t name of this show. <laughs> He'll, he'll change it to bait and switch. Um, <laughs> I will Card say... Card drafting. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Yes. Well, obviously... This is hands... I, I'd have to actually sit down and think about it, but I'm, I'm pretty sure this is one of my favorite mechanisms. Period. Yeah. This is a way to have interaction with other people without being mean, really. Because, yeah. yes, you can quote-unquote hate draft, take a card someone else wants... But you always do that at your own expense, usually. And usually. There's a few exceptions to that rule. Sometimes games mix up the formula a little bit. Um, but, yeah, usually... Uh, yeah, I, you're, 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 look, I, I took this because I needed the extra three coins so I could build the what's-it. Oh, and it just so happens that was the last thing you needed to complete your set of science. Um, but who knew? I just needed the coins, kind of a thing. I, I mean, that definitely undercuts the, the potential... Uh, you know, aggressive nature of a hate draft. If I, I, I don't feel so bad about it, if it's implicitly part of 
my overall strategy. I needed this card. I had to take one of these cards. Of course, I was going to take the one that helped benefit you the most. Sure. Games where, oh, well, I, ha I take one of these cards for myself, but then also, and by the way, I will burn one of these cards solely to keep it away from you, which has become a very standard way to make two-player variants for uh, drafting games, like Seven Wonders um, or Among the Stars. That gets a little bit more under the skin. That gets a little, You could have trashed anything. You trashed that one because you knew everything I was hoping for. Sure, I get uh, that, but at the same time, I, I understand it. It doesn't actually make me mad. It's more of a, oh, you. <laughs> <laughs> I hope somebody makes a gif of that. Or, <laughs> oh, you. Well, oh, no, I mean, there's a difference that between that. Delivery. That there's the, like, I can't believe you did that, as in, I will murder you. Yeah. <laughs> there's also, that. another thing is because usually, uh, right now I imagine we're both talking about, you know, card drafting of handing the hand back and forth. You know, the Sushi Go approach, the Seven Wonders approach. Often, I'll think, well, you know, I don't mind so much burning this thing that's so central to you because you gave it to me. If it was so important to you, you should have taken it on your turn instead of assuming it would come back to you later. To that end, my favorite kind of drafting game is the kind of game where I have a handful of cards and I want them all. <laughs> yes. And I sit there and I'm like, this is so good. And then, especially like in a two-player game, so recently I was playing Terraforming Mars, and I had the card and I'm like, I really want both of these cards. So I'm going to take the one I want more, obviously. Mm. But no, wait, maybe I'll take the one I want less because the one I want more, I think you don't want. Yeah, so I'll pass exactly. it to you, hoping it comes back to me, and then they drafted it. And I was like, ah! You know, but I love that. Now, I will yeah, notice I, here, if you sort these by ratings, you'll see the number okay. one here is Seven Wonders, which makes yep. sense. Yep. Number two is Ticket to Ride, and I think they're adding in drafting cards from a central thing. Although This I is argue, very broad, yeah. There I is a collection of cards, we take things. turns getting them. I assume the hand draft, d does that not have a special name? Like how there were 15 different names for various types of auctions? I know. But there's not a breakdown for these two universal. It's either the, there's a public pool, you see that in Nations, you see that kind of almost in Dominion a little bit, or the hand drafting. And I, everybody, when you say drafting, everybody assumes you mean hand drafting. But yeah, a whole bunch of cards and we just take turns grabbing them off the table is drafting as well. I would argue Ticket to Ride, it. at least anywhere I've ever played it, whenever I play with a game that has that mechanism, we call it Ticket to Ride Mechanism. I'll say, <laughs> and then there's some cards here on the side, Ticket to Ride. And I'll explain that there's a difference, like they're not replaced right away or whatever it is. But everyone understands yeah. instantly. That means you can take one of those cards that's face up or you can take one off the top of the deck. I don't know. Yeah. Then there's some games on here, like Agricola and Terraforming Mars, which are drafting is not necessarily in the yep. rules. It's an optional expert way to play the game. And if you like either one of these games a lot, you'll probably insist on doing it. Yeah. Actually, for Agricola, as a two-player game, we don't like the traditional hand draft um, because... Well, I mean, because it does introduce the hate drafting, but also because it takes so long. Well, uh, Agricola had an alternative version, which isn't a draft, where everybody gets 20 cards, and then you have to discard down to 14, uh, rather than everybody Ooh. gets 20 cards and we hand them around the table. I find that so much superior. And the problem with Agricola or Terraforming Mars, and occasionally I come across games that do this. Okay, everybody, before you start playing, everybody draw four cards and now start doing a draft. Uh, pick one, hand the rest until everybody's got their final four starting cards. That is such a terrible way to introduce anybody to a game. 100% agree. And that's why even though it's a difficult game to learn and has a lot of symbols, I've always liked games Race for the Galaxy has those starting hands for the first time you play. You're playing yeah. Planet One. Here's the four cards you yep. start with. And I can't tell you how many times I get out a new game and it says, draw three missions and pick one. I'm like, great, but no one knows how to play yet. I don't know what mission I pick. So I always, we always, wanna, in that situation, sometimes I just hand them out randomly. Like we don't even draft. Like I exactly. say, here's one. And you know what? Maybe that's what they're talking about here in Ticket to Ride for drafting. Maybe oh. they're talking about the tickets. You draw four tickets and you can keep one or one or more mm. of them or whatever no i mean it's a draft it's uh, you call it a ticket to ride draft but it is officially a draft um yeah there's no choice about it it's just weird that the hand draft 
I'm, I'm surprised hand draft isn't called out as its own mechanism because, yeah, strictly speaking, there's a pool. And it's just I only get to see a tiny portion of the pool as opposed to the entire pool. Um, but that is such a huge change. It probably does deserve. I mean, Ticket to Ride and Seven Wonders uh, uh, listed as the same mechanism doesn't quite feel right. Yeah, then so they got our, King our, of Tokyo our, our and Splendor. Of the backbone of Board Game Geek continues. Yeah, the King, Ticket Kingdom King of Tokyo. I guess there's some you can. There's a possibility if you're playing with the power up, where you can draft the power up cards. Oh I, wow! I guess. Or there's oh though no, I guess there's those power cards here. I'm skipping all these because I'm not counting. Yeah, Splendor. Yeah. What? Seven Wonders Duel. Back to drafting. Split. I know you like Seven Wonders two player better than Seven Wonders Duel, right? Yes. Yeah. But Seven Wonders Duel is a brilliant, very unique draft. The pyramid draft. Now Citadels is a weird draft. It is a draft. It's like the whole game. You have the eight characters and you or yeah. however many. You pick one, pass them around. So that yep. is a draft of sorts. I never thought of it that way. And I definitely, it's one of those technical yes, but if someone says I love drafting, I wouldn't say, well, then you'll want to play Citadels. <laughs> yeah, Citadels is a very unique, that's a love it or hate it what kind of this? game, definitely. Lords of Waterdeep patchwork? What? Lords of Waterdeep has drafting? Uh, and it's worker placement? Oh, there's... no, yes, it does. All right, because again, this is so broad, there's always four quests on the table. Oh, come on. Yeah, that's what they mean. And I okay, think well, how about this is patchwork? not too broad. How does patchwork fit in? Patchwork. Patchwork. Uh, no, it's of course it's a draft. Although, th oh, that's totally wrong. There's no cards in patchwork. Those are tiles. That's a tile drafting game. And we're doing this very weird draft slash time, oh, what do you call it, you know, time track style thing. You know, that we have to move forward and, and take them. Yeah, I think this is a bit broad. I mean... Considering all the ways that auctions was broken down, to not have drafting broken down into its various subcategories, I think was a bit of a, a bit of a mistake. Well, here, let's jump down to an actual drafting game, Sushi Go, one sure. of the most well-known ones. Whenever Where... I talk, whenever I'm doing a video, and um, you know, at the beginning, I have to say, "Oh, is this a drafting game?" You know, like Sushi Go. Yes. I mean, you know, that to me is you know the epitome. I mean, Seven Wonders obviously popularized the concept, but Sushi Go has made it truly universal. And then we have uh, Blood Rage has drafting in it. I don't think you've played uh, that one. I believe but you. That's a big part of the game. King Domino, you draft tiles. Yeah. Again, no cards. Yeah. Well, they're just fat cards. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. They're, yeah, they're very thick. They're, they're, they're really... Heavy, super heavy card stock. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to look here. A lot of these don't count. Concordia, Machikoro, they're, they're fun games, but they're not in this category. Sagrada, well, you draft. If we're talking about what, what I think the vast majority of people consider a drafting game to be. And this has just gotten too broad. Um, Sushi Go I'll Party. To go before we get to my favorite, or one of my favorites, Notre Dame. I mean, I know you have a problem with the Plague Rats in Notre Dame. <laughs> But, but well, that I don't deny that it's a drafting game. Drafting. It was my first Feld game and my first drafting game, and I, you know, I fell so hard in love with both of them off of that game. It's certainly one of the heaviest drafting games. Yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah, typically you're right. Drafting games tend a bit on the lighter side, right? Like a like a Isle of Cats is a great has a really nice strong card draft element to it. That's uh, true. So does, actually. So if I think drafting games, I'm like struggling to go down here. The very first one I ever played was Fairy Tale. Oh, of course. Yeah, that was an excellent. I really like that. That's what introduced me to the genre. And I know Magic the Gathering players always talk about their drafts, but I had never been part you of. You don't draft in the game. I know. I know. You I know, draft I know, I know. outside of the game, Magic the Gathering players. You are not drafting in the game. But they're considering that to be part of the game. Yeah. That's also where they say, so you, then you don't consider it a deck building game either. <laughs> oh my gosh, I have not heard that argument. Yeah, because uh, you build a deck. It's a deck construction game. <laughs> um, the biggest one in recent years for drafting, I think, has been Bunny Kingdoms. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. Although I wonder if it will be surpassed by. There's where Richard Garfield, Mr. Magic the Gathering, gives you a drafting game. It's Bunny Kingdoms. Come on, people. I wonder if it might be surpassed by Isle of Cats. 
in the long run, I think Isle of Cats is going to be with us for a long time. It's such a brilliant design. It's already, he's working on an expansion for it. Um, you know, the game, uh, you know, very few games try and even fewer succeed at having a really nice, chunky gamers game version, but then also a really great family variant in the box. So anybody, I mean, Isle of Cats is an amazing gateway game. And on top of that, it's a really good gateway game as well. I mean, yeah, that game, that just so blows everything else out of the water. I mean, it's so best of class. I think Hanam, Hanami Koji is drafting. Uh, is it? That's one of those... Yeah, I'm, I, I played it There's once. Fair, maybe, yeah. maybe late at night. And I won, which surprised me. Because I was playing against Paulo, the guy who checks all my goofs. And I beat him. And I decided I can never play this again. Because I have a 100% win rate. This is so problematic because there's so many games in this in this list here that I'm looking at that just don't fit in this category. Yep. Oh, well, well, they do. If you broaden the concept of a draft to be there is a pool of th Can you hear me? I hear you. I can see you. All They'll right. see us in 30 seconds, I guess. I think we're back. Um, yep. How long cast? No, this time it is. Uh, it would be easily considered to be um, thunderstorms outside. Oh, okay. Well, I guess I can still call that Comcast. I do not know what happened. Everyone, hear me now. It's not lag anymore, folks. That was internet. The internet went out. We're back. Uh, yep, yep, yep. Yeah. If you need, to just refresh your browser page, and that and that should kick YouTube back into shape. Oh, <laughs> I just said refresh, but it was underneath your name. <laughs> now I'm writing, listen to Tom. He knows what he's talking about from Rado. <laughs> ah, my power just blinked again. Are you still with me? Uh, I, I, I still hear you. All righty. Well, I don't know what's happened. <laughs> the joys of live broadcasting. Honestly, we've had a pretty lucky unbroken string of, you know, no flubs during these things. I guess it was bound to happen sooner or later. Alrighty. Well, I'm just waiting to see if people are back yet. Okay. Because uh, we're here together, but um, I'm not sure we're streaming yet. Oh, then I can say whatever I want. Or I can get a drink of water. I wonder if it's streaming to a different... Um, no, uh, yeah, I'm seeing, I'm seeing good again, good to go. Ah, we're back. All right. Yep. Sorry about that, everybody. That was a thunderstorm thing. And of it's Epic still Force. cranking out there. Oh, my. All righty. Well, I hope the cats are okay. We got Sorry, folks, you missed all of our best observations where we really just nailed it and now I don't think we could recreate it. And that's what I think of the secret game from Stegmeier. Oh wait, that's... Yep. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's only coming out with one game this year, he said. So... Yep. Although there's an expansion to Tapestry coming, I think. Yes, there is. And of course, another uh, Wingspan as well. Um, which, by the way, why isn't Wingspan listed as a drafting game? It is, it is. Oh, is it? Okay, there you go. Just trying to bring it back on topic that you fundamentally disagree with drafting. You know, I mean, this should have been called hand drafting, basically. What you and I are primarily thinking of as drafting games is well, now I'm really wondering if there is. Drafting. I'm wondering if there is a hand drafting thing. So let me spin down to H. Yeah, fast forward. There's hand management. Then there's, oh, there's something called drafting. Okay. So I guess we jumped to it too early. Oh, really? Well, there's, since, there's, uh, there's drafting under D versus card drafting? Well, you then know that's the problem. That uh, all these things that have drafts of various and sundry types should be under the universal drafting heading. And we should just universally, as an industry, define card drafting as Sushi Go. All right. stuff. Well, here we the go. The same way, there is one definition of a legacy game, and people stop trying to rename what legacy means. Uh-oh. Well... Uh, oh, no. 
Well, no, I'm going to be doing a. Uh, I'm going to do all the legacy games ranked very soon. I'm oh, working, really? I'm playing through one I haven't played through yet currently, but when that's done, I'm going to rank them all. And I think you might disagree with what I put down for. Uh oh. So well, okay. So I'll just say I don't consider Gloomhaven a legacy game. So, I would, yeah. I mean, uh, Gloomhaven and Shadowrun Crossfire, for yes. that matter, are they are legacy adjacent. I agree. Yeah, they're legacy ish. I'm talking more about the games that say, "Oh, look, we have a campaign mode. We're a legacy game." Oh no, no. I have no tolerance for that. Exactly. All right, so since we're on drafting, here's the real list. Okay, so first. <laughs> Well, we we start it. We can't we can't set it down. We got seven wonders, and seven wonders duel. Mm -hmm. Then we have Azul because it's not called card drafting. Remember, it's just called drafting. Right. So in Azul, you draft a group of a color tiles from the board. Yes. Then we have Sushi Go and Wingspan. You have sorted by number of owned or number of rated. Number rated. Sorry. Okay, gotcha. Okay. Then Clank. How is Clank a drafting game? <sighs> there. There are a there is a supply of cards available, but you have to buy those cards. That is not a game where I take a turn and take something, and then you take a turn and take something. Report it. I I think I think somebody has mislabeled <laughs> Clank. Oh, actually, now that I've got past the first obvious choices, now they got Imperial Settlers, Architects of the West Kingdom, Role Player. I don't think any of these I would consider. Role player is game. a dice drafting game. Every round, dice oh, come right. out, and we take turns you're drafting right. them. You're, you're still thinking of cards. Dice. Yeah. Manhattan Project. What, there's no dice drafting in that, or card drafting. That's a worker placement game. It's another. It's another game where, like whatever the other one we just said, where you buy things. Where occasionally, sometimes you will buy something. Well, here's yeah. some drafting games. Fairy tale. Yes. Yes. Um, Azul, Stained Glass of Sintra, Among the Stars, Res Arcana, you draft. At the, as part of setup. Well, you can also call the, taking those tiles in the middle, I guess. That's, I suppose, yeah. That's true. Man, I don't know. The Taverns of Teethenthal? The Networks? Networks, oh. is, networks is a general purpose draft. There's, what a, was it, three rows of cards? And, although you are... Uh, I don't know. Oh, I see. Someone said Architects has drafting during the setup, and there is some drafting in Imperial Settlers at the lookout phase. Oh, okay. I believe it. Paper Tales. That's a good drafting game. That's an excellent drafting game. And that's a, that's one of those rare games that Jen and I, yep, we'll play that, even though we do spend a fair bit of time trying to figure out how to crush each other. Yeah, but the crushing each other is more of a numbers game than actual destruction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it, it, it's well, like Seven Wonders in that regard. Seven yes. Wonders has one of the best military resolutions. Says, hey, we didn't ignore military in our civilization game here, but it's just a transfer of points. I don't come over and you know and crush you and steal your stuff and, oh, and right. kick down your sandcastle. People said ta Tavern Steep of all you draft dice. You're right. I forgot about that. Yeah. Draft Osaurus is definitely a drafting game. It's in the title. <laughs> yeah. Planet? And it's excellent. Planet's a good drafting game. You draft the sides of your planet, the little magnet pieces. Oh, the yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is a much better list here. Yeah, that card draft. Ooh, one best offer. treehouse ever. That's a fun drafting game. Have you played that one? Which one? Best treehouse ever. Yeah, that was a cute little game. That was that was very charming. Uh, drafting the rooms, right? That you put in your and they're different colors. Yeah, that was really nice. Scott Alms, again, tiny epic treehouse. You could they could have called it. Oh, Minecraft builders and biomes. That's not. How's that drafting? Nah, no. I mean, you got a board. You're moving around. You, you fight monsters to take cards, or you build things. No, you don't draft that stuff at all. Not at all. No. I wonder what they. They there's two types of mechanisms for drafting. By the way, this is one where you take something and everyone else passes it along. There's also drafting in racing games. It's a very different thing when you. Get behind another oh, car. Car behind another car. Well, that's that's a mechanism in at least four games I've played. Sure, yes. So, that's car drafting. Or bicycle drafting. That's right, and Umreifenblatt. Yep, and the uh, the more recent one, uh, Flamme Rouge. Oh, in Minecraft, you draft cubes. I guess. I don't, is that drafting? Oh, 
that's a good point. I'll bu I, I will allow that. Because that's actually the coolest thing about Minecraft is the puzzle of seeing that cube disintegrate as we just keep taking pieces off of it. That's a good point. I like that, actually. I'll allow it. Alrighty, well, there's more. Yes, I didn't say forum trade genome. It's on Brado's shelf. Yes, there's that. There's... <laughs> oh, someone wants to see the definition? Drafting is a means of distributing cards or other game elements to players through an ordered selection process. A typical implementation, everyone gets the same number of cards. You pick one to keep and pass the rest to your left. And you keep going. An alternative is one person gets cards, they take one and pass it to everyone has one, like Citadels. Yeah. And then open draft where you, everyone shows all the options and you take turns selection. See, Select there you go. Them. This should, you know, the open draft should be its own title. I this is too agree. broad. This touches 70% of the games in the modern board game industry if you put all that stuff together. That's the problem. Open drafting. All righty. Well, there you go, folks. We started yeah. with ca ca card uh, in war <laughs> with, games. with card battle system, which we didn't agree with. Then we moved on to card drafting, which we didn't agree with. And then we got to drafting, which we continue to not agree with. <laughs> All right. Let's go to a top five where we will definitely agree, I'm sure. 100%. All right, I, you know, I know it's been so long since we've done one of these. I don't even care what the topic is. Just give me some topics, and I'll give some of the ride on you can pick from them. All right, yep, that's the plan, Stan. <laughs> I do like Stan. I'll be Stan, and you be uh, Hardy. Ollie? Or Ollie, <laughs> Ollie, that's right, Ollie. Yep. That thunder's really loud. Yeah. Oh, that's a good one. I'll do that one. Yeah, strictly speaking, this is on my channel, and traditionally those have been non-game related. But that's never really been, you know, a mandate. <laughs> Uh-oh. No, I just think this one's been on the list, like, three times, but... Oh, somebody just will not stop until I pick it? All right, I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give you uh, two board games and two nines. So it's up to you. It's your Ooh, call. Okay. Yeah, I go to make up for lost time. All, All right. right. So you can either pick the top five skills you can learn or pick up from playing board games. Um, the top five kitchen appliances. Again. Uh, uh, top five seafoods. Or your top five rule book. Wow. Um, the problem with the rule books is I would have to think long and hard about that. Uh, I, I mean, I, I can think of maybe one or two off the top of my head, so I'm going to put that one aside. That's, that is a worthy topic of, like, really serious thought. I mean, either one of us should do a real proper top ten of that. Just as a message to the industry, do more of this. So yeah, I'll tell you why the reason I've never really done it. People ask <clears> me to do it because the amount of research in it would be immense. It would be, yeah, it would be insane. It would be insane. Now, I mean, yeah. I know be a very recent game I would put on the list, but... Um. Yeah, so that one's out. Um, and you know what? I, I think I think we've avoided kitchen appliances long enough. <laughs> I think it's, I think it, the time has come. Fine. <laughs> Somebody asked that uh, skills you learn from playing board games again in the future. That was a good one. That, that is a good one. That is a good one, definitely. Yeah. All right. All right. Um, in my see, life, are, are in we, my are life, I, yes. All right. I have very few distinct remembrances of new technologies. I remember the first time I saw a smartphone. I remember the first time I've seen different things, but I distinctly remember as a young child that first time I saw the microwave, and it yeah. for me is hands down the number one thing. Even I know that you can cook without a microwave and stuff, but it is just it is so handy. If it broke, I would fix it so fast. I, You're I, right. I don't know I how mean, you can go against the microwave. Oh gosh, when did microwaves become a thing? Because you're right. As a young child in the 70s, I kind of remember thinking, wow, what is this magic box? So there was a time in my life when I didn't have access to one. 
and it changed everything. I mean, obviously, yes. Uh, you know, it's unassailable. I mean, that technology. Um, I am wondering, yeah, when did microwave ovens become a thing? Are you doing a search for that? Oh, no, Are but I, I, I can. Uh, sorry, I was fixing my microphone. Sorry, folks. I guess the thunder took out my microphone, too? I don't know. Oh, my gosh. 1967 is when the microwave went mainstream. Yeah, but... Like I know my parents didn't have one. I, I exactly. I was probably it was we probably got one around eighty one, eighty two, or something like that. Um, yep. And and actually, I lived for five years on a boat, and we went from living in a house where we had a microwave to living on a boat without a microwave, and that was hard. Um, so yeah, microwave, unassailable, the number one by far. Um, it, it can do everything. Just as long as you uh, don't put a fork in it. Have you ever done that? I assume uh, it's a real thing you have to worry about. My whole life I've been terrified of No, I, from what I understand, it's not as bad as... I, I think I read somewhere... I, I, was it Mythbusters? Somewhere that it wasn't as bad as people said. But the one thing I've done is I put things that have foil on the lids in there before and I haven't noticed. And mm -hmm. you see some sparks, so I, I took them off. Oh, okay. Let's see. Well, um, here's going to be the one that I think 20 years from now, because it's a relatively new appliance, it will be looked upon with the same ubiquity as the microwave. Um, I don't know what the actual name for it is. Uh, I just know what our brand name is. It's the Ninja Foodie. And it is basically it's kind of like a crock pot. Um, I mean, which I'm sure you're aware of, you know, it's kind of like a slow cooker, but, you know, it has that same form factor, but it has like six or seven different features that it is effectively a micro oven. It is a saute baster. It is an air fryer. It is truly revolutionary. What's it called? The Ninja Foodie, and it's foodie with an I. Two years ago, when we moved back to the States and my mom moved in with us, that Christmas, my mom wanted to say thank you and get something special for Jen, my wife. And she heard about these Ninja Foodies, and I had to spend hours driving all up and down the West Coast uh, from Vancouver to Portland to because it was the number one hottest gift item for Christmas that year. And I eventually found there was some... Uh, uh, like, like an Ace Hardware or something like that that had two of them in the entire... And I found it, and... In the two years since, I think we have probably, Jen, my wife, has turned on our oven or our stovetop less than a half a dozen times because the foodie truly does everything. It instantly heats up. It will take an entire chicken. You can throw it in there. Um, and, you know, and, and not only does it come out just beautiful, juicy, and delicious, but because it has a built-in air fryer, it'll also have nice crispy skin. And, um, yeah, my wife, she'll make a nice slow cook uh, soup that she'll just start in the morning and it'll be delicious that evening. And the house will smell wonderful all day. It is, I, I mean, she could come in here and sing its praises. It is truly a life changing right, well, I'm device. I'm going to accept this because I'm just going to, I'm going to incorporate in the slow cooker on my end. Yeah. But, you know, it's basically a slow cooker 2.0. Okay. It's, it's the evolution turning a slow cooker into a truly multi-use appliance. And once you have one, you will not go back. It's amazing. All righty. Well, how about, I'll just say this because I lived with this in Korea. This was my number one appliance to the point when we came back. We continue to use it, very similar to the slow cooker, is the rice cooker. The rice cooker. Yep, I figured that was coming. Um, Do you have one? I no, no, no. I mean, well, we're, we're, we're both low carvers, so we don't really do much in the way. I mean, if you're going to put a bread breaker on here as well. Although, I mean, I know people love them, and you know, they, you know, they, they, do a, they do a very specific thing very, very well. And you can't deny that, that rice is like one of the premier food staples around the world. I mean, what's life like if you don't have a rice cooker? How bad is it? to put it in a pan of water and boil. Well, let me tell you that. Okay, well, we'll hold off on that one for now. How about... Well, you tell me, I don't know. How about the dishwasher? <laughs> yes. I, that, I, was, I was thinking about putting it on there. It's, it's certainly adjacent, but yeah. I mean, talk about a transformative device if you've got one. We, we didn't have one for a decade, 
And now that you have it, it's like, huh, how did – I'm, I'm yep. a little bitter that my parents didn't have one when I was growing up. I was – my dad would always be like, you are the dishwasher. Ho, 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 exactly. Ho, ho. We don't need a dishwasher. I already got one. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, I, I would totally – I'm 100% down with the dishwasher. Um, you know, and actually – I was just gonna say oh oh um oh, oh many years ago we had a uh, homemade ice cream maker that was really nice but i think that's pretty niche but it was really nice i'll put it on the list if you want i don't care yeah. ice cream makers are important yeah all right all right however if we put that on the list we also have to put on the freezer or I'd be even more specific. Oh, geez, you're you're being much more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. How about the well, deep? Yes. No, no. Listen, the deep freezer has changed my life. Oh, you mean like the the one you have out in the garage, so that you, that kind of a thing? Well, it could be in your it, kitchen too. Yes? I mean, yes, because that saves so much money for me. Mm -hmm. Over the course of well, I've had one now for fifteen years, yeah. and if I find something on sale, boom, just buy a ton of it. And it's yep. good for a long time. Yep. Also, if you're going to make yep. ice cream, you need somewhere to put it. That, that's very true. That's very true. Yeah, I mean, you're right. We actually have two, a big one and a small one, because there's a, you know, we're in a relatively rural area. There's lots of little independent farms. And every year we've, we actually toured one. We actually toured several. And we found one we really like the people. We really love the way they raise the animals. And so every year we buy a half a cow and a half a pig. And you know, get it cut up into a million different ways, and it stays out in there in the freezer, and it feeds us for a whole year. And we love it. We know where the food came from. We knew it was ethically treated. Um, and yeah, we we wouldn't be able to do that without you know the big, super deep chest freezer. Absolutely love it. Yeah, you right. you are reading Jen's mind there, quite frankly, definitely. You know what, folks? That's it. We're done. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I I get there's a lot of other things. People have mentioned, obviously, the refrigerator, the blender, the uh, – someone mentioned one that – what did they say? The uh, – what did someone say that I was like, yeah, that's a good thing to have too. Oh, coffee pot. I don't care about the coffee pot, but the, the K, the K packet, whatever that does, makes stuff. That's changed people's lives. You put the little cartridge in and it makes the instant coffee or hot oh, chocolate. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. All right, but we don't want to. We don't want to not talk about games this episode. So, it's time for your <laughs> yeah. questions about games. Oh my gosh, we're down for fifteen minutes. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, that was uh, an eclectic list. All right, but folks, we're eclectic guys. If you have any questions about games or well anything in in essence, but uh, I don't want the people who came here for games to be upset. Although we don't talk about drafting for a really long time. I uh, yeah yeah. But yeah, so it's it's a yeah. Sorry if we're a bit off our game, folks. Somebody disappeared for two weeks. <laughs> well, also, and then the internet went down in the middle of this. So <laughs> yeah, no, it's been a it's. I'm still having a good time. Uh, there's so many. There's some games I'm not enjoying as much, but there's a lot of great games that exist out there. Um, yep. So I'm I'm having a good time, and uh, I don't know. I got a chance to play games with my kids. On a weekly basis, they're playing games with me, so we'll have to wait and see. Are you going? Have you been doing? You 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 said someone who will remain unnamed gave you a sound drubbing. Does that mean you're out on in game nights? Uh, well, not Florida? no, not particularly. Uh, but we have a very closed circle. Obviously, some of the guys here in the studio. But oh, okay, sure, sure. But yeah, no, 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 no. I'm not so going. So Mike Lisio destroyed you as well. I'm not saying a name. <laughs> Uh, I apologize, folks. Uh, if you're asking questions about Pendulum, we'll answer those in a future week. We can answer factual questions. This is not a factual question. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> um, the, uh, oh, someone asked which recent Back to the Future game is best. I'm actually doing a comparison of the two of them coming out this week. Good. I, I, they have not sent me uh, one for Prospero Hall yet. I'm looking forward to trying it. Oh, what game will win the Spiel des Jahres? That's true. They haven't done that yet. Let's make our prediction. Oh, that's a good idea. Where's the list? It's my city. Okay. It's um, it's my city. The legacy, uh, not roll and write, but flip and build game from yeah. Reiner Canizia. There is um, the Nova Luna, and then there's the party game, which is called Paintings, or what is that called? It's a really generic name. 
I don't know. You're doing so well for so long. Ah, well, that one's not my choice. Uh, uh, the other one is. I'm doing a search now. I'm checking Surely Dice Tower just News. Said it in the chat. Dice Tower News will tell pictures, me. Pictures, pictures. Yeah, it's pictures. That's right. <sighs> um, right. I pictures. I'm never gonna play it. I'm aware of it. No, Nova Luna is really good. It's a very, very sharp game, although, quite frankly, that should have gone to Mandala if you wanted to give a nod to some really great Uwe Rosenberg stuff. Um, and we just finished, right before we were filming today, My City. Jen and I just finished our 24 uh, individual sessions, and I would have to give it to My City. I am very impressed by that. I would love for more families, and mostly we're talking about German families, to be introduced to the idea of, le of true, proper legacy-style gameplay in a really easy to absorb and learn and watch it grow and change right in front of you package. I was very impressed by the game as a whole. The, the, the core flipping right to do Polyomino Tetris piece City Builder is a good, solid, kind of middle of the line you know, if it came out just using its core mechanisms. But the level of invention that Reiner Knizia brings every time you open up a new envelope and you get these new pieces that fundamentally make you have to, okay, we have to throw away everything we knew about this game. It com we have to completely reprogram our brains and start playing in a new way. I'm not convinced on that. How far have you played it? Have you finished it? I, I'm, I've not finished it yet, but okay. I've, I'm not convinced that it's fundamentally different it's more like oh well, I, I feel like if he I, I, if he I, I, if he I had given me the game and he said what's the next legacy thing i think a lot of these i would have guessed mm -hmm. um don't get me wrong i think the game's fine i yeah. i think the legacy actually in my opinion it's a little slow the legacy although to be fair the game's also 15 minutes or 20 yeah, minutes 10 to 15 minutes yeah the problem is i it's not a 10 to 15 minute game that I was like, let's play 24 times. You know, <laughs> it's... Well, just for folks know, it is designed that um, when you sit down to play this game, you are going to play three chapters. Or yeah, but those three chapters are remarkably similar. That's my yep. concern. You play the same thing three times in a row, and mm -hmm. I... And each one of those games is 10 minutes long. So it's the typical... Well, 10 minutes for two players. ...length session. Ten minutes for two players, but yes, it's not much it's more for more. Right, it's ten minutes regardless of player. Uh, if one player is slightly slower, blah blah blah. Well, sure, that's true. Yes, yes, yes. Because the way it works is, think about it this way: if you're playing with two players, there's always gonna be a point where one of you is going, "Hmm, let me think," and you're, and the other person waits for you briefly. That's gonna go up the more players you play. That the chance that somebody that okay, somebody yeah. there is I taking a little bit longer. That. It averages out a bit longer. That's true. That being said, I think it will win because the, the committee has now nominated a legacy game multiple times. Mm -hmm. They they definitely are liking that. And Reiner Knizia has only won the Spiel Jars once. And this is a pretty solid game. And yeah. honestly... Well, you would agree it is a great introduction to legacy. Right, I mean, I do not disagree on that. That's great. Yeah, since I mean, since we're not talking the Kenner Spiel, we're talking just the Spiel. My do not disagree is the same as I could have just said I agree, but yes. Yeah. <laughs> Double negatives for the win. What what uh, what about Nova Luna? I mean, I think Nova Luna is fine. The problem with Nova Luna is, it's a tough game to shout about. I don't know how else to explain it. Like, if someone says, "Hey, Nova Luna," I'm like, "Yeah, it's a pretty good game," but I would rather point people to something that I think would excite them. And I think it would be a hard, like for a family, if I gave Nova Luna or My City, they're going to play My City first. It looks more interesting. Yeah. Yeah. What, you want to do Kenner while we're at it? Oh, sure. Well, okay. Well, I think, where's the Kenner ones? It's uh, uh, That's Cartographers, The Crew, and The King's Dilemma. <laughs> the Crew. I'm not even going to. I mean, I if the Cartographers wins it, then huzzah. That, that's I will be a so nice... happy for Keith and company. That right. would be so wonderful. That, that's like Shem Phillips winning a few years ago for uh, the, Vi the Viking game, and you know that changed his life. Yes. And, yeah. So I, that being I, said, I, I, I think King Salama doesn't have a chance. I love it, yeah. but I don't think it has a chance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Plus, they're going to give the uh, legacy to my city. So they can't give a legacy to my city and to King's uh, I don't dilemma. know how much they internalize this sort of thing, right? I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure. Yeah, it's completely different committees, I believe, as I understand it. Yeah, the, the only thing is, I assumed the crew was going to be a Spiel nomination. As soon as it was Kenner, okay, well, that's it. But I'm, I, my, I am really rooting for um, Keith and Cartographers big time. That would be so wonderful. Although it'd be wonderful for Cosmos and crew to win, and the crew certainly deserves it. Such a brilliant game. Do you guys have a business account when you kickstart, or does it come out of your personal account? Um, like, if you kickstart a game, oh. is that Rado kickstarting it, or is it Rado runs through kickstarting it? Oh, you mean people want to follow me? No, no. Uh, I, well, one, I don't kickstart games, or I very rarely do. If you see me kickstarting a game, it's because I want it so bad, and I know I'll never cover it because they didn't give me a review copy. And at any given time, I've got 50 to 100 review copies of games. So if I buy it, I can't cover it because I just don't have time. Um, but yeah, it's just you just find Richard Ham. I, I do not have a separate account. And really, you'll just see occasionally I do expansions for games I really want really bad. I have a private account that I use to back stuff for the Dice Tower Library. Um, that. I have a, a Tom Vassell account that you can follow, or Dice Tower, maybe it's called. I forget what it's called. You can follow that one, but I only back something there if I want you to know I backed it. Yeah, because that's the thing. You know, if, if you back a game, it's instantly, it's going to pick up more backers. Maybe. I don't. That, that seems egotistical, but the last time I backed something, I backed it from the wrong account, and I got like an email within five minutes from someone saying, hey, can you just back my game for a dollar? And I yeah. felt that's... Yep, I get those requests every once in a while. And it's like, oh, I, I want to help, but, uh, yeah, I, ah. Yep. All right, do you feel double-layered player boards are worth the expense? Are they, you mean expense for the end user? Well, they cost more money for the both the publisher and for the end user. Yeah. Do you have an idea of how much? No, but I know it's not cheap. Yeah, okay. Um, I love them. I'm always nice. knocking stuff around. Yeah. We're not supposed to talk about Pendulum, so I won't say anything there. Um, Did that, I'm trying to remember now. Pendulum doesn't have double layer, and one could argue that it could use it. And got I just it, gave it got it. Well, I was thinking, I, totally I, just, oh, no. I just got the new version of Eclipse in, and that yeah. has double boards in it. There's, oh, they're so marvelous. Yeah, they're, they are definitely a luxury that feels luxurious, but also has a marked impact on the quality of the game experience. There's no two ways about it. You know, I mean, they just feel good. They're so big and heavy and weighty. It feels like you're, you're getting more with the game. But then on top of that, it keeps stuff where it's supposed to be. And, yeah, I mean, it's nice that you can have an aftermarket for the clear acrylic stuff that you put over your Terra Mystica, or your, not your Terra Mystica, your uh, Terraforming Mars board. But, yeah, I mean, I would say they are definitely worthwhile. All right, last question, because I know it's going to take up the next six minutes. The pros and cons of review embargoes. Okay. Um, um, well, obviously the pro is it gives everybody time if, if the reviews are sent out. I mean, I've gotten games before in the mail where they say, the review embargo was uh, two days ago. I'm like, oh, thanks. You know? <laughs> Yeah. But yeah, yeah. if if they send out this stuff early enough, then it gives everyone a chance to play it, and there's not necessarily people going to be rushing to get the review out ahead of everybody else. Exactly. That, that is the point. I have filmed my run-through of Pendulum and put it up the other day, but I'm not going to film my final thoughts because I separate my videos out, unlike you, because I'll get to play it another half dozen times. Last year, I played Tapestry more than any other game. I played it almost a dozen times, um, and that is in large part because I had the, the freedom and the breathing room. Because I, I think Tom will admit to this, but I think very few contract carriers will. We're all racing each other. Every time I see Tom get a game covered before me, you're like, Vassal! Well, and I'm sure, oh, you are if you see me cover no, no, something. No, 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 no. I, I don't race as much these days as I used to. Um, but that's only because he's way out in front, folks. No, no. <laughs> shut up, sit down. Is, but... I I feel like, I don't know. I mean, it also depends on the game. There's only, there's only about 10 games a year or less that actually fit into this category. Exactly, yeah. Um, that being said, 
So there's definitely pros in that regard. I, I personally don't think it's all pros. Um, I've, already said, I've already said in the past, first of all, if a small publisher comes and says, I have an embargo on my review, it, I almost chuckle a bit like, oh, ho, ho, you want your game, you, your embargo is June 10th. Yes, I'll get to it in August. It just, you Thank know, you. It, yep. that embargo doesn't mean anything. Um, have you seen my shell? It's, <laughs> there's just no time. Exactly. The, the thing where I think you and I might disagree is, mm -hmm. I disagree on an opinion embargo. Like, I don't understand why oh, we you mean the way talk Jamie's about Pendulum, to... but we can't okay. give an opinion on it. That's weird, and I don't know any other industry where that happens. Maybe yes. video games, maybe. But even video games, when people play them early, they still give their opinions of them. Mm -hmm. Like, if you go see a movie, you don't say... Well, I'll tell you, there was a lot of action, but I can't tell you if I liked it or not. That's weird to me, and that smacks to me of essentially reviewers becoming just promoters for the game. Uh, I'm, I'm being very hesitant here. I'm not accusing anyone of anything. I want to be clear on that. Yes. Um, but that to me, a, a, con of, uh, a con of embargoes is all the reviews come out at the same time. It's overwhelming. It looks like it was... Uh, a paid thing by the publisher, even if it's not. It looks, you know, if you didn't want to hear about Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion two weeks ago, too bad. Because every reviewer talked about it. You know? Yeah, yeah. And, but, like Rado said, I like that because I got to play a lot of that game before it went up. Exactly. Yep. See, it's interesting. Um, uh, I mean, I, one, I don't know how much of this, uh, you know, Jamie, because I think Jamie's the only person who's done this, this kind of, you know, okay, we can put out some stuff, but just keep the opinion stuff until the end. I would say the pro to that is it counteracts the, well, um, first impressions leave a final indelible mark on this game. Because if we all got Pendulum in and we're all just, oh, look, we played it once, we gave it some first impressions and that's it. That's that's the beginning and end of it. Um, you know, I will definitely have a more well-rounded look of Pendulum by the time I actually, and whatever it is, July 29th, I think, 25th or something like that, because I will have had more time to play it, um, which is not always the case. Sometimes I only get to play a game, uh, you know, a couple of times, or actually, in fact, most of the time that's the case. So I really appreciate the breathing room, which can't be cheap for Jamie. No, no, either. no, I get that, but <sighs> yes, it's not cheap, perhaps, but it's it's brilliant because what happens is you get two videos. It creates an event. You get yes. the first video, which tells you about the game, and then video yep. two comes out, which gives you the opinion. And it's, so that is a great marketing ploy. I agree. Um, you know, and, and that is, and I wonder because you could certainly list that as another pro for the publisher. Oh, I think and, it's a pro wonder, for the publisher by who a mile. Is it a con for? There's this perception and this kind of under the surface. Well, I don't know. It just feels kind of dirty. Well, is it dirty? No, it's not. The only way I think an embargo is genuinely, objectively bad is when the embargo will not be lifted until after the game or the movie or the book or whatever it is has already been on the market. Well, that's why that when bad. there's a movie embargo until after the movie releases, then they, means know. they know it's a bad movie. Exactly. <laughs> and, that, and that is chicanery of the highest order. That and hasn't happened in the board game industry board game at all. publisher do that. No, but you could argue that it still is like a. It's set up so that the embargo ends right be, during this pre-order phase. Mm -hmm. So the hype well, that, is built it's there. That's what Jamie did with uh, last year with Tapestry. The embargo lifted the day that the uh, pre-orders launched, and he has since gone on record saying, "Yeah, I regret that. That was a mistake." Which is why he's not doing that this year. Our embargo lifts, and then the pre-orders don't start for a week after. And I think that's an example of, you know, of well, you know, Jamie is his very definition is learning and iterating and and doing better and better. I think that's again, this is kind of a moot point uh, in a sense that I think I get ten or less of these a year. Indeed, yeah, it's just they become very memorable, so it's all anybody wants to talk about. Now, this is obviously this isn't taking into effect Kickstarters. Kickstarters have their own things going on, but that's because of the launch of the Kickstarter. Blah blah oh, blah. Gosh. We're talking yeah, yeah. about published games. Yeah, most publishers don't care. Sometimes there's an embargo because of an IP. Yeah. Sometimes the publisher 
says, well, I don't really care, but the, the uh, intellectual property holder wants you to wait till their movie's released or whatever yeah. it might be. But, yeah, it's an interesting topic. But at the end of the day, not that big of a deal. It, yeah, you I either think need to, to trust me, your reviewers or not. Of, I was just going to say, it smacks of the Internet's kind of predisposition to be grumpy about everything. It, it always strikes me as, well, you're really looking for something to be grumpy about. Can't you just be excited about games? That's... And that's me being grumpy about somebody being grumpy. And well, so I'm the grumpy about what you just said. <laughs> <laughs> it's a circle of grump. It's the circle of grump. <laughs> all righty. Well, all right, folks. We're getting our, our stride back. We'll be back in two weeks on the Dice Tower channel. So we hope yep, yep. that we will see you all then. And, of course, we have stuff going up on our own channels as we speak. I just posted a review of um, Sonora from Pandasaurus Games. What about you? Um, this, I have one, Tom, I can say. Uh, this Saturday, Jen and I will be playing a couple of games live, uh, 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. It's probably going to be Altiplano with the Traveler expansion, although I'm still thinking. Um, and uh, you can find that at live.rado.com. There's a link to it right now. So come and join us, won't you? All righty. Well, until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Rado. We'll see you all. Have fun gaming. <laughs>